Mr. Rosenstein. Uh, exactly eight weeks ago, this committee held a confirmation hearing for the Attorney General, my former colleague Jeff Sessions. Now, Attorney General Sessions and I have very different views about a lot of things, but the purpose of a confirmation hearing is not to resolve differences of opinion on policy. The purpose of a confirmation hearing is to allow the American people to decide for themselves through our exchanges uh, here in the committee whether the nominee is qualified to serve. But in order for the hearing to truly serve that purpose, nominees must answer questions honestly. That's why they swear an oath. But eight weeks ago, my question was not answered honestly. I asked then Senator Sessions the following question. If there is any evidence that anyone affiliated with the Trump campaign communicated with the Russian government in the course of this <coughs> campaign, what will you do? I didn't ask who had communicated with the Russian government. I asked how the man positioned to become the nation's top law enforcement individual, a man who had served as chairman of the Trump campaign's National Security Advisor, Advisory Committee would conduct himself if circumstances required that the Department of Justice investigate members of that same campaign. Here's what then Senator Sessions said, and I quote, Senator Franken, I'm not aware of any of those activities. I have been called a surrogate at a time or two in that campaign, and I did not have communications with the Russians. Let me repeat that. I did not have communications with the Russians. As we all know now, that wasn't true. Attorney General Sessions met at least twice with Russian ambassador in 2016, once in July, an event during the Republican National Convention, and once in September in a private meeting in his Senate office. But Attorney General Sessions did not acknowledge the fact that his testimony misrepresented the truth until the Washington Post published an article exposing his meetings with the Russian ambassador. In the seven weeks, seven weeks between his appearance before this committee and the publication of that article, Attorney General Sessions had ample opportunity to come clean and correct the record, but that's not what he did. So after an embarrassing story in the Post, describing undisclosed meeting with the very same Russian official whose communications forced the President's National Security Advisor to resign, Attorney General Sessions hastily called a press conference and announced that he would recuse himself from overseeing any Justice Department investigation into Russian interference with the election. So, Mr. Rosenstein, now that the Attorney General has recused himself, it's your turn to answer my question, the very same question. Again, here is the question I asked then Senator Sessions and that I would like you to answer now. If there is any evidence that anyone affiliated with the Trump campaign communicated with the Russian government in the course of this campaign, what will you do? If uh, there is <clears throat> predication to believe that such a communication was in violation of federal law, Senator, I would ensure an appropriate investigation. Now, Mr. Rosenstein, do you understand that you have an ongoing obligation to update your testimony and correct any inaccuracies or mistakes that you discover after you leave the hearing today? You're making me very self-conscious, Senator, but yes, I believe I do. I, I'm trying to be as careful as I can. Good. I must uh, have just taken it for granted that witnesses understood their obligation to correct inaccuracies in their testimony, but evidently that obligation was not known to Attorney General Sessions. Yesterday, four days after the press conference at which he announced his recusal, and 55 days after his hearing, Attorney General Sessions finally wrote to the committee to update his testimony. In that updated testimony, the Attorney General references a letter written by the Democratic members of this committee on March 3rd. Attorney General Sessions said, and I quote, the letter asks why I did not supplement the record to note any contact with the Russian ambassador before its disclosure. Having considered my answer responsive and no one having suggested otherwise, there was no need for a supplemented answer. So it would seem that in the Attorney General's view, unless this committee has reason to believe that a witness provided false testimony 
or unless this committee suggests that a witness's answer is grossly misleading or unresponsive, that that witness is relieved of his or her sworn duty to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. But I don't think that's how it works. And in light of Attorney General Sessions' failure to recognize his obligation to this body, I thought it was important for me to make sure that you clearly understand this obligation. And you do understand this obligation, right? I believe I do, Senator. Okay. I think Senator Sessions should come back. I think he owes it to this committee to come back and to explain himself. Because he, he also says in his letter, uh, may I just... I will not, I, this will be very short. Uh, he says, having, let's see, I did not mention communications I had with the Russian ambassador over the years because the question did not ask about them. I asked him what he would do as attorney general if it was true that members of the campaign had met with the Russians. So he says, I did not mention communications I had with the Russian ambassador over the years because the question did not ask about them. He answered a question I didn't ask. And for him to put this in his letter as a response is insulting. And I, I, he should come back and explain himself, Mr. Chairman. I think he owes that to us. Because this appears to me like he was, and I have been, I've bent over backward not to say that he lied. He needs to come back. I've bent over backward. I have given him the benefit of the doubt, but he has to come back. 